All right. <laughs> we're here, and Mads is with me. And we're going to get some coffee. He just interviewed me, so you'll see this on his page a week, a couple days maybe? Uh, maybe a week, because I'll, yeah, I'm, I have a lot of videos I need to edit, so it's, yeah. Right, and then um, we'll, he'll allow me to put it on my page as well, so sure. we spent about two hours talking about the boat. I'm sure it'll turn into... 10 minutes <laughs> hopefully it won't be two hours but you're a good yeah. storyteller so it might turn out to be a long one yeah through the through the magic of television so yeah. um in my style of recording this is called i call it kamikaze style oh very <laughs> exciting right so we just finished talking and um with walk through the boat and of course you're on my channel you've seen all the boat stuff before yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so now i wanted to talk to mads about his sailing experience. Oh! So yeah, this is your turn now. <laughs> Exciting! So, um, tell me, when did you start sailing? Uh, actually, I think it's like three years ago. Okay, Not so like that, me. Yeah, yeah. So 2012, 13? Yeah, sounds about right, yeah. Okay, so how, how did you uh, fall into it? Well, it's actually, I always, I've always wanted to sail, but you know, it's, it takes time and when I got done with university and, and I just, it, yeah, there was a lot of stuff going on. I just bought a house that I needed to renovate and yeah, I got done with that. So all of a sudden I had this huge amount of free time that I wanted to, yeah, so I started sailing. So how did you, how did you first start? Did you take a, a class or? Yeah, you... yeah, I took a sailing class for, it's a two year thing in Denmark where you have, we, you meet up sort of once or twice a week and you go sailing. So, really? Yeah, it's quite fun. Okay, what kind of boat was it? It was, well, you don't have them over here. It's, um, oh geez, let me think. It's a, it's called a Maxi 24, 27? So it's a keelboat, not a, yeah. not, a, not a cabin boat. It's a keelboat. It's right. a keelboat, yeah. So no, no, no head, no downstairs at all? Well, there was sort of a few bunks down below, and but okay. it's, it's really cramped. It's like, we wouldn't fit down there. Right, right. We're right. tall. Okay. Okay, I got you. So it's more of a boat than probably I learned to sail on. Um, okay. My uh, and I don't think <laughs> I, when, I think Andy Shell interviewed me. I totally skipped over the sailing school part. Oh yeah. Yeah, I went to school for two years as well. Yeah. Um, you know, here in the U.S., they have the ASA. Yeah, I've heard of those. Or yeah. the U.S. sailing route. Yeah. To get your sailing certifications or whatever. So I went the ASA route, the American Sailing Association. And <clears throat> I took the, I think it's 101 and 103 and yeah. 104, 5, 6. I've got all the way up to um, the navigation class. I've taken the navigation class. Okay. So the next class I have to take is the celestial class. Yeah, well, that'll be interesting. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to take it with ASA. I think I'll just nah. take yeah. it with Andy or something. Yeah, yeah. plus you won't you'll probably never need it but it's it's fun to know that stuff yeah i want to know it just because you know that's part of who i am the, yeah. the historian and all exactly. that kind of stuff and um the the other the other classes are the cruising classes where you actually oh, yeah. have to cruise um for your certification but yeah. i don't i don't think i want to do that through that i think i just want to start cruising with people sure. friends who are going on trips and maybe take one of andy's expeditions or something like that but yeah yeah, yeah. i did the school for two years too so yours went from basic keelboat operation to what? Uh, well, we don't really have that sort of distinction. Okay. Then, like, it's just it's all it's all basic keelboat stuff, and then. So, like, what did you learn how to do on in that class? Uh, sail handling, bit of navigation, knots, that kind of stuff. Oh, so it it, it did it teach you how to uh, navigate at night? Actually, that's a different course, but I took it at the same time. So, but but there are two courses. One is sort of the practical thing. And the other one is all the theoretical stuff. Okay. So one is out in the boat and one is in a classroom? Exactly. exactly. Oh, so yeah, that's done a little differently. Yeah. Uh, here in the States, they kind of do it, um, I think the one, like 103 is how to coastal cruise. Oh, yeah. Up to a 35-foot boat. Oh, yeah. So it doesn't get into engines. And okay. then the 105 might be coastal cruising up to a 45 foot boat yeah um with the engines and all that kind of stuff okay. so you get into yeah. understanding the engines and all that kind of crap yeah. so they're a little bit i think a little bit different here in okay. terms of how they do the classes yeah and then the, the, the navigation class is totally separate okay. yeah you know 
I mean, you you learn a little bit of navigation in some of the coastal cruising, but not the hardcore how to do your. Uh, I do your calculations. Well, not just the calculations, but oh. your. What is it called? <laughs> Clearly, I haven't been sailing them all, at all this year. <laughs> your. Uh, come on, well, you know where you really are. Your. Uh, <laughs> oh, what's that in English? Jeez. Well, I know what's in Danish, so. <laughs> what is it in Danish? Uh, I guess you're referring to Pilinger. <laughs> where, uh, Pilinger! You, yeah. Yes, where that's you, what it is. You look at your compass, you have a course for something, and then another thing, and then you know where you are because you're. Right, you're right, right, right. right. That thing. Okay. Uh, my seamanship is going to take an L for today, clearly. <laughs> I can't remember how I got to point B from point A. But at any rate, yeah, Pilinger. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to call it that. I'll type you some Danish there. That's, yeah, I'll come Pilinger. in handy at some point. I only know, uh, hey, no. Well, that's not Danish. Oh, right? that's Swedish. Yeah. That's Swedish. But um, what is it called? I'm drawing a blank right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, come but anyway, here. you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, right? Pilinger. Yeah, Pilinger, <laughs> right. So yeah, you learned a little bit of that in the uh, the 103 classes. Yeah. But um, so you took the classes for two years, and t tell me how your experience was with that. Let's get oh. back on you, man. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh, that's the kamikaze part, right? What did it say? Oh, it's still recording. Okay, good. We should. I think we can both be in there. It says right down there. Okay, good. good. <laughs> so, tell me about your your class. Like, what did you learn? Did you say, okay, wow, this is wonderful. I really want to do this, or? Yeah, actually, I started taking the sort of the practical um, classes, and about a month into it or something, I knew I wanted my own boat. So oh, really? Wow. Yeah, I okay. started looking and went out and found Oblix rather quickly. Really? Yeah. So, would you do you think if you would have waited longer, yeah, you would have gotten a different boat, or has Oblix been the perfect? Training, well, training wheels. you know how they say everything about a boat is compromise? Right. Yeah, that's how I kind of got to get obliques because the Ballad, the Elven Ballad, has a reputation for being a very stiff and seaworthy, seaworthy vessel, right? Having said that, it's a racer cruiser. Oh. And what I really want is a cruiser. Right. But we don't, I don't think we really have a tradition for sort of real cruisers back home. I don't not like you do over here anyways, where you have all of the sort of the, the classic American sort of heavy displacement cruisers like West Sails, Tayanas, those kind of boats. Right? Well, and, I, and, and you've told me that before, but that still amazes me because my thoughts were yeah. that the American boats were modeled after older European boats, but you were telling me that those boats are really work boats. I think not so. Not cruising I, boats. I, I might be mistaken here, but but I think that's how, because it's, it's not really a pleasure craft, but a lot of our older sort of working vessels have full keels and that kind of style. Not cruising sailboats. Though. Not cruising sailboats. No. Of course, we have the modern production uh, boats like Bavaria, Chanel, Benito, that kind of boats. Right. But that's, that's not really what I want. Right. I am drawn towards that more classical American... Shippy. Sh the shippy DNA, <laughs> as my friend Doc would say, yeah. Right, right, shippy DNA. Yeah. Wow, okay, okay. So, you've learned from Oblix what? Uh, I guess I've learned that I can single-hand a boat. And, and for that, she's been really good because she's... She's easy to handle, and she has fin kill, so it's it's easy to do harbor maneuvers and stuff like that. So in, in many regards, she's a she's a really good beginner boat. That's that's for sure. It's it, if only I had standing headroom and she was like four feet bigger. Right. I think I might want to keep her for the for the rest of my life. But okay. As it stands now, I am in three years going to be looking for a bigger boat. Okay. And you 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 think you've pretty much settled on. Oh, oh no no no! I have a long <laughs> list. I have a long list. Really? Yeah, and actually, a friend of ours that we have in common, uh, SV Corsair, right. uh, he's like a walking encyclopedia of boats. You should definitely have a chat with him. That's um, we talked about different boats uh, for the past two days where I've been staying with him, and it was uh, really educational. And my list has grown by several boats, and so. Oh yeah. really? So what other boats do you recommend? Oh, I have them on my uh, on my laptop. I can't remember the names off the top okay. of my head, but okay. you know, because it's kind of difficult. I've never seen these boats in person. Oh really? So I really okay. don't have anything. Well, I've seen some of them. We took a tour of a marina, but it's yeah, they're on my list. Okay. Did you make it down to Port Annapolis? Yeah. Yeah. Did you did you did you go to a 
a boat yard where there was a Benito dealer. A Benito dealer. I don't know if there's a Benito dealer, but we went to with sailing nervous. I went to a few different boat yards. Okay. Yeah, that 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 boat yard. It's off of um, MB Beach Road. Does that oh, ring a bell? Nah, that doesn't. But I I drive by my GPS, so I don't really. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 just great. It's got a bunch of old boats in there. Wow, yeah. nice. But uh, at any rate, well, that's good. Well, so let's see. Other than boats, yeah. Um, what's your long-term cruising plan? Well, my my long-term plan is to become a full-time cruiser, and I figure that'll happen in about six years. Really? So you is is it based on just having a large uh, bank account where you can oh. live off of it, or is it about don't, working? About don't I wish? <laughs> no, it's it's gonna be working. I'll just I'll move aboard a boat instead of staying in a house, and okay. I'll sail around the world, and I'll probably I have a background as a software developer, okay. so I'll probably make money that way or by doing projects aboard boats, different places, okay. stuff like that. So then you think, or you you think it's reasonable to say that you can. Uh, develop software while cruising. Sure, sure. So there are sort of limitations for what you can do and what I'll probably do is I'll uh, spend a winter somewhere with good Wi-Fi right. and that's where I'll save up a bit of money. Okay. That's my plan at least. That's, gotcha. Yeah. Or, and I'm asking this question, if you're, someone says, oh we've got a project we want you to do. Yeah. And it's going to take you probably a month to do it. You can tell them, hey, I'll be in this port in a month's time. I plan to have Wi-Fi. Yeah. I'll be able to work on your project. Then is that an option kind of thing? It might be, but I think uh, the most of sort of the the projects are going to be a bit rushed. That's usually how, oh, it, works. Rushed. That's yeah. how it works. They want okay. it now, right? Oh. So it's probably somewhere something where I say, okay, now I'm in this marina. It's really nice. It's got decent internet. So. I'll work from here for the next six months. Let's see what kind of jobs I can get. Okay. Do you remember the guy that uh, Drake interviewed Ben? Yeah, yeah. I bought that with the that, that a had cat. a wishbone. He, he had the uh, the cat the cat boat. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's yeah. called a, it's called a cat boat. Oh. It's, um, got that one unstayed mass with the yeah. with the wishbone and on it. That is a wishbone rig, right? Right. Yep. Yeah. We've never I've never seen those back home. I, I've strange. never seen the one in person either. Yeah, I've actually seen one. You have in person? Yeah, over here. Wow. I've actually seen one in Canada and one in the U.S. Oh wow. Yeah. Right. He does software too, right? Oh, he does. I thought he did. I thought that's what his his profession was. Oh, it might have been. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Do you um, have you figured out what you think a budget would be for a good cruising budget? Um, <laughs> I have, and I figure I'll have a cruising kitty of around somewhere, say, seventy to a hundred thousand dollars, uh, and then I'll work and just because I don't really know how steady work I can get, right? So that'll right. be yeah. Well, what I meant was, how much do you think your expenditures will be on an average per month? On an average per month, well, the thing I found out is that when I'm sailing. I use absolutely no money. It's ridiculous to cheap. Right. Yeah. Well, so, for what you've done so far. Yeah, that's true. And that might change depending on where I am in the world. Yeah, but... A lot of these foreign countries, they they like to take your money for you, oh, to, yeah. come, for yeah. you to for you to come in their waters. Yeah. But yeah. I'll that I think I'll figure that out. I've heard some estimates of what it'll cost per month saying around two thousand right. dollars per month. Right. Yeah. That that's yeah. kind of the typical one. But to be honest, I think I'm able to do it cheaper. I think. Hey, it, yeah. it's how you set your boat up. So in your new boat, when you get your boat, it's yeah. going to have solar panels and water. Solar and panels that. and most likely a wind generator. What about a uh, water maker? Ah, that is a tough one. I know Doug about Harmony that I did that tour of the West Sail 42 with not long ago. He has a water maker that he's extremely confident in and well it's because I've heard sort of different opinions some say they break down all the time and some say they're reliable right so it I think I'm not 100% I haven't made up my mind yet that's basically what I'm saying because I want to make sure that if I get one it's not gonna be more trouble than it's worth right right and they use a lot of energy too a lot of that's power. true that's yeah. true 
my thought was to have well my goal is to be able to cruise with who will be maybe my wife if you're listening <laughs> um, and so I, I, I know there's certain amenities that I'm probably going to have to have on a boat yeah. to uh, keep a woman happy one is her the ability to take a, sh- a shower or a bath yeah. ever so often that's not in salt water so stuff like a door for the head, and, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, crazy stuff you know, like that. You know, yeah. So uh, you know, I, that, that's my goal. I would love to, you know, not be like Leonard Night Party, but to cruise oh, yeah. with your best friend, with your, yeah. your, 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 you know, the person that's there is a dream. Yeah, yeah. You know, because nobody yeah. wants to cruise. I mean, some people want to cruise alone, but that's not something I'm interested in nah. long term. And actually my dream is pretty much the same right. the small hiccup that women in, Dan- in Denmark that are into sailing few and far apart That's, really? yeah wow so we'll you got, see you gotta go over to Sweden what's there? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a look that's where Andy found his wife and there's oh, yeah. somebody else that's a, a Swede I think this I, I, I've heard of yeah. that this culture for Swedes and women sailing I think there are a bunch of Swedes in the S- in SCA, I believe, which is the uh, the uh, the Volvo oh, yeah. team, the yeah. all, all women team, I believe. Well, I don't think I want that. But it's really that sort of <laughs> racing focus. Oh yeah, she'll, that, she'll, she'll be she'll be the captain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I've been around the world, dude. Yeah. What are you doing? Oh, been pondering it around in Denmark. Yeah. All right, right. No. Well, this has just been great. I want to thank you for for stopping by and checking out my. Uh, my boat build. I, I yeah. look forward to, uh, you know, seeing the videos posted. Maybe one day uh, coming over to your neck of the woods and, and seeing what's going on in uh, in Denmark. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Not and not. Uh, what, what did I call your your city? What did I say? Oh, you said part of uh, Holland. Holland, yeah. yeah. Not Holland. There, there we, are no wooden shoes there. Yeah, we're actually a separate country in Denmark. <laughs> it, it, a lot of Americans don't really seem to realize this, but Denmark is a separate country. Yes, quite different a, from Holland. There's a lot of water to separate the two. Yeah, and there's no marijuana there. No marijuana, and, yeah, not legally. <laughs> in no prostitutes either. Well, plenty of prostitutes. <laughs> uh, you can go nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, that's that's in this country. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is Kamal and this is Mass. Peace and blessings. You get the button now. Okay. <laughs>